I'm Chris McDonough, a retired homicide detective. I've interviewed thousands of people, from serial killers to ministers. Welcome to the interview room. Aloha, everybody. Welcome to the interview room. Um, so grateful that you're here. Um, I'm uh, going to do this tonight uh, by myself. Uh, Dylan is off and mom is in the background somewhere, but uh, we're grateful that each and every one of you are here as always. Um, we absolutely love our mods and want to thank you up front, uh, Stephanie. Uh, I see Miss Sophia's in here uh, already. And uh, who else we have uh, coming in? Uh, Miss Sophia, Stephanie. Um, well, we got a couple so far, so this is going to get even better, even better. But uh, Mimi J2 and uh, everybody, we love you guys. Can't do this without you. Um, and where are you at? Where's everybody at tonight? Give it. Give me a uh, uh, a view of where you are around the world. Uh, let's see here. Can, can't sit right now, Roxanne. You're feeding your Kentucky's in the house. Uh, how many folks from Arizona are in the house uh, as well? North Dakota, Atlanta. Great to see everybody here. PA, Scotland, Clinton, Tennessee, uh, Kansas, Florida, West Tennessee. And the list keeps going. Texas, Michigan. It's great to have each of you here. Oklahoma. Um Let's see here. I, I saw Doug's in the house. Canada, our, our great friends up there north of us, Maryland, Michigan, New Jersey. We're so grateful that each of you are here. Spain from in Europe, Pueblo, Colorado, Rancho Cucamonga, California. This is going to uh, I see that dog dogs. Welcome uh, dogs with jobs. Welcome, uh, Mr. Uh, Robinson, who we're going to have on here uh, may use your services. Let's see what we get out of this tonight. Uh, Jersey, uh, Minneapolis, Tennessee, uh, Shenandoah Valley, Virginia. Love that area. Boy, so famous. Well, while everybody's coming in, I want to introduce our guest tonight. Um, and you guys know how I am. I only take a look at cases that, you know, quite frankly, uh, London uh, have done a tremendous amount of work themselves, but at the same time can use our help in the true crime community. Uh, so uh, without further ado, I want to introduce Mr. David Robinson. Uh, good evening, David. Hey, how you doing, Chris? Thank you so much for uh, having me on. Oh, you are so very welcome. It is absolutely my pleasure and honor, quite frankly, to, to have you uh, on the show tonight. Um, you know, I, I actually had a, a very interesting experience last night because we were doing uh, another program and... I guess a friend of yours, she goes by you knew, uh, came up into the chat and out of the blue said, you need to reach out to Mr. You know David Robinson. He asked, she asked me, do I know a Daniel Robinson? And I said, well, yeah, just out of curiosity, I just talked to his dad the, you know, the day before. And so I'm thinking the universe is on schedule and uh, you know, maybe there's a, a higher purpose to this that we just don't see so far. That's right. I, I believe that too. Yep. Awesome. So tell me a little bit uh, about your son or tell our audience here. And I know that at some point you're willing to, you know, talk to the, talk to our folks here uh, and kind of get the information out. We'll talk about, you know, what you've done, what, what you need. Okay. And how we can help uh, in the true crime community. And if we have any other creators out there, uh, please invite Mr. Robinson on your show. Uh, he needs to get the word out about his son, uh, Daniel, 
And what we're going to do tonight, he and I have agreed to just kind of do a high level, uh, you know, run into victimology uh, and the case uh, where it stands, how it started, uh, some of the things law enforcement has done, some of the things they haven't done, some of the resources that he's brought to them. And he's kind of motive, trying to motivate, uh, you know, folks from getting, uh, you know, moving in the right direction so that his son just doesn't become a statistic. And uh, we're here to help him uh, in that effort. And so at any time, uh, David, you know, you just stop me okay, and, um, you know, we'll see where we can go from there. Does that sound like a plan, brother? It sounds like a plan. Thank you so much. Okay. And he's a veteran. So all of our vets out there, uh, take a look. Uh, you've got, we've got one of our own over here that is in need of some assistance. So, uh, and he's going to get into that here in a little bit. So, um, David, what I put together was a little PowerPoint for our audience. Okay. Sometimes it makes it a little easier. And, and folks, as we go through this, just kind of catalog your thoughts and, uh, you know, we'll try to get back to them. Uh, but, where we need to do, and I see Steph already put your website up. Yeah, keep dropping his links, uh, helpfinddaniel.com uh, into the chat here uh, so that we have this later on. So this is a high level uh, run and overview. Uh, I'm not gonna be paying much attention to the chat, so forgive me up front. I need to make my screen a little bit bigger uh, so that um, uh, Daniel and or David and I can have a a chat here, okay? Uh, so one of the things here is our victimology. So your son is 24. He's a scientist uh, with a very stable environment and job. Tell tell the audience a little bit about David and that piece of his life. Yes, um, Daniel is, uh, like you say, a young geologist. Uh, he graduated from the College of Charleston in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, he, um, uh, he graduated with honors. Um, he, you know, he did really well in the school. Um, he um, also uh, started a, uh, well, he's a founder of a fraternity in that, in that school. So he have a lot of friends, of course. Uh, very energetic guy. He loved to travel and things like that. So uh, when he, he landed his job straight out of college um, right there in, um, in Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona, uh, I mean, you think about it, uh, he loved geology. And, and what better place to be is in Arizona uh, with the uh, rock formations and uh, the way um, that area is, is uh, uh, you know, situated there. And um, so Daniel loved his job. He loved um, this, this, the, uh, the state. Uh, he even, uh, on our two-hour conversations, often tried to somehow convince me to uh, live in Arizona. <laughs> he, um, he just loved Arizona. And, and uh, so it was his, his first experience away from um, like I, I like to say, the cradle of, um, you know, me and his mother being around his family and, um, and his friends here in South Carolina. And uh, so he was able to get away and venture out and, and start his uh, adulthood. Um, like I say, 24 years old, uh, starting starting off in life young, um, caring for himself, you know, um, have his own uh, place that he lived and, and things like that. So very responsible with his job, always on time, um, had a, a, a little cheaper vehicle. Um, saved his money up and and got a better vehicle. So he's he's been very responsible uh, for himself and things like that. So, uh, twenty four year old scientist, what can you say? I'm very proud of him. Very much. And forgive me, right from the get go, I already messed up his name. I got you and him mixed up. Uh, you know, I, I'm so yeah. sorry for that. Right from the get go, I, you know, I I've, mm -hmm. I've got him in my my brain here, Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. Uh, so. He, there's no indications of any emotional distress. There, the, he's communicating with the family consistently. Everybody, uh, he has a stable work and education history. Okay? This is a, a squeaky clean young man. Uh, he is just you know living life. Uh, he's living for the day, and all of a sudden one day he disappears okay, from a from a work site. So here's the family timeline. Uh, and so Daniel goes missing on the morning of June 23rd, 2021. He left, uh, uh, David, fill us in a little bit more uh, about this particular timeline 
uh, when he was driving his blue uh, gray Jeep Renegade. Tell us a little bit about, you know, what you've learned uh, in this particular timeline. Well, you know, um, the first time I heard that my son was missing, of course, was uh, on the 23rd. I was here in South Carolina, um, you know, uh, get a call from my daughter. It was late in the evening here. Uh, she told me that my son, um, you know, well, one of the co-workers came by, the, the, uh, by her place, um, seeing if Dane was there. Um, you know, of course, she just felt kind of strange when I'm asking that. You know, he, he's, he's always at work. Yeah, he goes to work. Uh, so she let me know. I told him, hey, look, you need to go and um, you know, check his apartment, do all my due diligence first, uh, go to his apartment, see if he's there. Uh, while he, she was doing that, I was calling him. Of course, he wasn't answering the phone. Um, but then I look at the time, you know, it was a little um, after six hours um, from what the time she said the coworker said that um, he was on the job around nine that morning. So uh, Dan don't go that long without, you know, contacting his family uh, one way or the other, you know. Uh, he'll tell us, um, you know, what he's doing. So, um, yeah, I, that's when I got worried. But um, the, the thing I understand from um, that timeline is uh, from what I heard from the Buckeye Police Department once I was able to uh, get that, that missing person report in. Uh, and the officer crews at that, that time um, uh, started asking questions uh, with the coworkers and things like that. And so um, I last heard they got in contact with the gentleman that was uh, saw my son last at the well site. Uh, so that timeline came from um, the story that was told to us um, uh, from the officer uh, who talked to that gentleman. Okay, so uh, on Tuesday the 19th, his vehicle is found by a rancher a little over two and a half miles from his original work site. Uh, and this is a remote part of the desert. Uh, on that day, a rancher reported the vehicle to Buckeye Police Department in Arizona who later did a search by ground and drone. The vehicle was recovered, but Daniel was not found. I, I absolutely love this picture of your son. Yes. It, that's this, this, man, if this doesn't tell people about his free spirit and his, you know, his love for outdoors uh, and, you know, nothing does. I don't think anything's going to stop us from this point, understanding who your boy is here. Uh Okay, so additional timeline from your family, and correct me if I get something wrong. Okay? Uh, he has an innate passion for adventure, which we just saw in that last picture, and is known to travel in opportune moments. However, he has always communi with, communicated with your family and his travel plans. Uh, plans. I'm assuming that's coming from an a, uh, army dad. Yes, and also um, from uh, that's right. <laughs> and also uh, from his his sister, uh, we both uh, uh, wrote that together. Um, you know, she's uh, um, you know he, here she's in Arizona also, and 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 they both like to go hiking and, and things. She he just come up and say, hey, let's go hiking. You know, things like that. And, oh, let's go here and things like that. So that's Daniel. Yes. Okay, and so that day, uh, he was on the job when he disappeared. And said he had he hadn't been last seen by uh, by a worker from another company who worked with him at a well. Tell us a little bit more about that piece of the puzzle. Well, you know, um, Daniel, he, like I said, he's a geologist. He's hired as a field geologist where he go out to well sites all the time. Um, that's most of the time I get to talk to my son while he's at those wells. We have our conversations. Uh, Daniel go into those wells and uh, uh, wait, wait, well. He get assigned to a well site, and um, every time he get um, um, assigned to one, is generally uh, just him meeting a representative from that drilling company. Uh, so every time he's out there, most most of the time, he's out there just himself and one other individual. Um, just like this time on the twenty third, it was just him and one other visual individual from a company called Weber. Um, when he was there um, um, at that well site. Um, you know, uh, he, he, he that's what he does. He, he he's, he's supposed to be there uh, collecting the rock samples um, and, uh, and and the water uh, level at that well site. But um, the gentleman there, like I said, uh, said that they had a little ten minute conversation uh, about the weather. Um, my son decided he wanted to go back to Phoenix. He was tired. Uh, he wanted to go back and go in and call it a day. He had the ability to do so uh, because he can close that site down. Uh, the gentleman said he decided he didn't, we want to stay because the sale's gonna go over. My son kind of got in, looked at him, got in his vehicle, did a little wave off and just drove off. And that's where my son had been seen again. Okay. 
and but he had made plans previously with your family uh and he was looking forward to hook you know connecting in july right and then uh he expressed plans uh for the future tell me about i know you t- you shared with me but share with the audience how he was talking about you know the girl thing and you know other situations coming up potentially uh, uh share with the audience uh those thoughts well you know um i talked to my son two days prior to him um going missing um, he did have plans with his sister that weekend to go hiking. He, he just loved hiking. Um, so that's one of the plans. But we did have, as a family, uh, plans for myself to come out, his sister to come from California, one is on the twin sisters to come from California, and the one in Arizona. We was all going to meet in Arizona because it was an easier place. Um, and uh, we all congregate together there in July. He wanted to show me that vehicle. The, the picture that you guys see online, that's the same picture that he sent me. Uh, and, uh, you know, he, he's, he's proud of the vehicle. I want to see it for the first time. So we did have plans uh, to come out to, um, you know, to be, be together for July. Um, as in, uh, I think you mentioned the young lady. Um, you no, know, Daniel did mention that to me two days prior. Uh, but everything that I know um, detail-wise um, is, is totally, uh, some things are accurate, but a lot of things are not. There's a lot of things out of, take out of context. Um, but, you know, my, my son never um, expressed any feelings of uh, being in love with anybody and things like that. So um, but he did mention the young lady um, and, you know, that that type of things down the line. So, um, uh, and, you know, he had he had plans. Like I said, my son had plans for the future. Uh, conversation always even you know, uh, two nights before um, his, his plans is like he always wanted to be an entrepreneur. He's, he is an entrepreneur. He have an entrepreneur spirit. He wants to start his own business. Uh, he, he had plans to one day um, travel the world pretty much. He loved culture. So we talk about things like that from cryptocurrencies to love, you know, saying everything, I guess, a, a father and his son would speak about. That's me and Daniel. I love it. I, I love this statement here from Layla. Uh, I feel like Daniel is America's son as Gabby was called America's daughter. At least we should be so fortunate to have him. You know, that is a just an amazing comment. I'm going to leave it up there for a little while because if we have anything to do with it, go ahead. No, thank you a lot. <laughs> yeah. Be, if we have anything to do with it, uh, guys and gals tonight, we've got almost a thousand people in here right now. Let's, let's, you know, share this video out and see if we can get another two or 3000 and, and let's make Daniel, uh, America's son. Uh, we, this young man is, deserves, uh, the respect, uh, that he has earned by working really hard. Uh, and the young men like this just don't disappear in the middle of the desert. They, it just doesn't happen. So we're, we're here uh, to, to help move this along. So you filed a missing persons report uh, the evening Daniel was last seen. And since uh, then, your family has utilized all avenues to get law enforcement to help by asking them to launch an investigation uh, into what happened uh, and what to what what's happening here and what's going on here. Um, so let's talk about law enforcement's timeline. Okay. And what I'd like to ask you is kind of help us fill in some of the gaps uh, in relationship to, you know, the information that's been presented so far yes. and how you've actually amassed a massive team uh, to come together. Uh, and folks, if if one of our mods can drop uh, the website again for Daniel, you're going to see some grids that they've searched. You're going to see, you're going to hear press conferences. Uh, the, the news has picked up on it, but not enough. He needs more news coverage. He needs more national news coverage. He needs YouTube true crime community to jump in here and support David and his family in helping to find uh, America's son here. We need to get folks motivated uh, to help find this young man. So here's the, the law enforcement timeline uh, as we know it to date. So this is, uh, this is all accurate information. Uh, it was put out by LE, uh, but uh, David has some gaps in this that he's going to be able to help us understand how some of this information came to be. Uh, there seemed to be a little lag initially into the crime or uh, into this investigation. And it was this man right here that motivated Ellie 
to get on the ball and keep things moving. Okay. Am I accurate in saying that? Yes, sir. Yeah, Roger sure. that. Okay. Sure. <laughs> so, okay, so we got the 23rd of July. Daniel was last seen leaving his job site near San, Sun Valley Park Parkway and Cactus Road just after 9 a.m. Okay. You report him. When did you get the phone call just after uh, that time frame? Do you recall? I, I think it was around uh, about 3 or 4 that even in my time. Um, you know, I had um, – uh, I know it was a little later here in, um, in South Carolina at the time, um, but like I said, I was unable to put the report in initially. Uh, they told me I had to wait the full 12 hours. Um, I was a little shorter than that, so um, I had to wait um, those hours, those three hours, and, and then call back again. Uh, so, um, uh, uh, so you know, that's when I initially put it in, um, the time roughly what they, they have there, um, okay. Arizona time. Arizona time, okay, which is three hours behind South Carolina time. Right, that's right. Okay, so you call them approximately seven. They immediately, or when do they start the ground search, if you know? Well, um, you know, I talked to Officer Cruz, um, who was the night uh, officer uh, who took the uh, report. And uh, Officer Cruz, uh, very polite. Um, you know, he uh, gave me um, information, he stayed on the phone with me. You know, uh, he, he talked to the coworkers. He told me he was going to go out and uh, I, at the time I didn't know um, if my son was actually in the desert missing. Um, but I did know that uh, um, um, the officer told Cruz told me he was going to ride down Sun Valley Parkway. Well, I know what it is now, but then I didn't know. Um, so ride down the road to see if he's you know stuck on the side of the road and things like that. Um, while he was telling me those things, I started learning uh, that my son was actually in the desert. Um, I asked him, could he go out there and search? Uh, of course, it was nighttime. Uh, he told me they would most likely have to do it in the morning because of that uh, that reason. Um, you know, they get somebody out there in the desert that time of the night is really late. Uh, so, of course, you know, as a father, I'm not going to sleep. Um, I was up all night uh, waiting until that morning. Um, and uh, on the phone, I, I can't tell you, uh, Officer Cruz was um, answering my call every, seemed like every hour, every two hours, we was, we was always on the constantly on the call together, and uh, he give me some updates, uh, whatever he's finding and things like that uh, when it comes in terms of asking uh, questions with coworkers and things. And uh, so uh, the next morning came, um, it, you know, it was a different officer. Um, I think his name was Haley, and uh, he told me that uh, um, you know they're going to have a helicopter go out um, to in that desert to look for my son. I was very grateful. Uh, but then he called back like an hour later and then said, no, it was a no-go because his higher-up said um, it was unauthorized. Uh, my son's a grown man, and if he wanted to disappear, he can't. And uh, that's what made me immediately decide to come out to Arizona. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, your fatherly instinct kicked in and said, you know, I, I'm going to do this. I'm go I got to do it myself if I have to. And you've been doing it every single day since that day, haven't you? I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear your question. Can you repeat that for me, please? No, that's all right. Yeah, the fa your fatherly instinct kicked in, that's and right. you, you were thinking, because uh, I know that feeling. You know, I I get it. Uh, you know, I'm going to do this if, even if I have to do it myself. And you you kicked into high gear uh, and started uh, getting. You had information that he was out in the desert, uh, uh, or at least had gone to the desert at some point. Uh, and you were going to be immediately headed back to Phoenix or the, the, the Arizona area, correct? That's right. Um, you know, um, that's exactly what my feeling was at the time. You know, if they weren't going to do it, I kept asking them why. Uh, they couldn't do it because of the, um, you know, uh, authorization. You know, the son, is uh, he's an adult, he's over 18, and they felt like if he wanted to disappear, which I don't know where they got that from, at the time, um, you know, I wasn't thinking that way. I was thinking like, okay, why you guys not want to go search for him? Uh, so I had to go do it myself. And like I said, I just lost my reality in a sense and grab everything I could and put it in my vehicle and just started heading, heading west. Okay. So uh, Buckeye police eventually do a, do some start a ground search. Uh, they enter him uh, into NamUs and NCIC. I'm assuming that's what that means entered into National Missing Persons Database. So they, they put him in as a missing persons. Uh, July 24th comes around. Uh, that's when they did the ground search. They had access to vehicle uh, Uconnect system 
uh, but no GPS data. What what can you tell us about that? Well, on June 24th, uh, the next day, um, they didn't do anything on June 24th. Um, that's uh, the day that I left to start heading out to Arizona. And, um, you know, of course, I'm constantly calling them on my travels, talking to family, uh, talking to Buckeye Police Department. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm amazed I, can, I was driving and, and handling all that at one time. Uh, but the, uh, the, next, the actual search didn't happen until I hit Arizona on the 26th. Um, uh, uh, my auntie, uh, I have an auntie in uh, Philly. Uh, I don't know what she said to the Buckeye Police Department, but she called me back and said, David, we got a bird. Um, they're using some type of, I think the name of the helicopter, some type of firebird helicopter. Um, that was on the uh, 26th. We have a bird. They're going to put it out in the air and um, go search for Daniel. I was very grateful. And I had just um, came up to, uh, into Phoenix um, that day. And, um, you know, and I was waiting on a report from that. So that was the first um, uh, search that I heard of um, that ever happened um, um, with the Buckeye Police Department. Uh, the next search didn't happen to almost a week and a half later uh, when they had um, Silver Evertrol. I didn't really, I had doubts about the first search and only because of the, the gentleman that, like I said, I saw my son last uh, when I, I questioned him myself because that was one of the main reasons, um, uh, one, one of the main things I wanted to do when I got there uh, is look this man in the eye, you know, and another man tell me that my son that I know well um, just so how just wave his hand and just disappear in the desert. That was, uh, you know, it's something I couldn't accept. I just had to look this guy in the eye and he just tell me that out of his own mouth. Um, and, and uh, you know, so when I talked to him about the, um, the search um, that's supposed to happen um, on the 26th, they say they did. Um, he said he was at the well site. I said, OK, well, you saw the officers out there. You saw the helicopter and, and everything. He said, well, I didn't personally see it. Um, and I'm thinking, my head, OK, well, they really searching this area and he's at the well site. Why didn't he see the cops and why didn't he see the helicopters? Um, so it, it made me question that. I say, okay, maybe they didn't really do a search. They just told me that. Uh, so, um, um, so when they, like I said, a week and a half later, um, they wanted to do Silver Air Patrol. That's what uh, uh, Detective Biffin called me and told me. They were going to have detect, um, them out there. I didn't tell them I was going to show up. I sat out there from 6 o'clock in the morning. My daughter and I and, and dog and everybody, just, we sat there and on the side of the road and waited. And they showed up. It was um, uh, four vehicles, um, uh, four uh, Silver Air Patrol vehicles, and uh, two detectives uh, came in. Uh, they sat outside the gate for like two hours, and then they finally went in. They said the helicopter, the airplane's supposed to do a drive, a uh, flyby, and that's exactly what they did a flyby uh, with, uh, flew by um, uh, one, one time. You know, it's supposed to be multiple times. So, um, and, you know, we sat out there for hours um, just waiting. It's it roughly about three hours. Uh, the four hours um, just sitting on the side of the road until that event was over. So that, like I said, that was a week and a half. Um, and then the next search didn't ever happen until the vehicle was found. And that was on July uh, the 19th uh, when they say they did a search. So those are the real timelines of uh, when the searches happened. But you can't say in between that time, I already have, um, before the vehicle showed up, I have already started my uh, personal uh, searches for my son. Interesting. Um so here's a here's another group here. Have you heard of EquiSearch? Have you heard of them? Hey, uh, on the rerun, oh, when you watch this again, uh, uh, look those guys up. They do a lot of uh, uh, searching on horseback. Uh, they are really really good. Uh, they've been helping uh, a lot of folks, uh, you know, all over this country, and they they have they're really really good. Uh, but we'll talk about them in a little bit, okay? Uh, so they attempted to ping his cell phone. Uh, their location was unsuccessful. Uh, they checked his apartment. Uh, did they come up with anything? And, you know, and, and, I'm, and the sad part is I, I really uh, I get frustrated. Um, from day one, my family has been asking for um, Buckeye Police Department to give us cell phone, phone data. Um, that was one of the first things because we wanted to know where my son was located. We, um, since we found out he was missing that on the 23rd, we've been calling his phone all night, all day. And uh, his phone stayed charged uh, for a day and a half before it finally, I guess, went dead because uh, the phone is ring, ring, ring. We leave voicemails, uh, text messages. Um, he would not answer uh, for, like I said, a day and a half until the phone decided, I guess, died. And that's when it started going straight to voicemail. So, of course, 
the first thing we asked for <clears throat> was the cell phone pings. Uh, we also asked for, um, you know, um, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I don't know about how law enforcement do things, but I'm aware that there's cameras on most uh, intersections I've seen. And, um, you know, to show my son's movement from his apartment to his, his job site, uh, we wanted those things. He also had a Uconnect in his vehicle that we needed data from. And he, everything that we asked for, they conveniently told us they couldn't get. They couldn't get the cell phone things because they don't have a warrant. They said, my son, um, um, it's not a, a, he's just a missing person. It had to be a criminal case. Um, there's no criminal case. Um, a judge wouldn't give them a warrant because they were telling us for a while, yeah, we're going to get a warrant to get a, a, a cell phone ping. And then Detective Hannon, uh, uh, Sergeant Hannon, Hannon, Hanneman, that's his name, um, put us in the interrogation room and, and told us that um, they can't get a warrant. So, and then they wanted to look at his phone records. And um, I keep saying this over and over again, sir, and to a lot of people I talk to on the show, if, if holding my phone up like this and scrolling down my phone and showing them um, the phone records, is police getting obtained the phone records, that's, there you go. That's what they put in the police report. They obtained phone records from me and my daughter sitting in the interrogation room, showing them on my phone. And when they wanted the bank statements, it was me calling a USAA bank because I'm a sponsor for my son on speakerphone and, and let them uh, and talk to the representative to get some of the information that we can about my son's bank, uh, bank statement. And then they write in report, we got obtained bank statements. But they said they couldn't get it on the phone because they need warrants. And so they rely on us to uh, show them certain things over our phone. Um, like I say, they didn't want to give us pings. So we went to the Uconnect. Hey, look, my son has a Uconnect in his vehicle. It's like an OnStar. I don't know if a lot of people know what that is, uh, but it's all like an OnStar. Um, they came back and said, well, they couldn't get anything from that. Um, they tried and it uh, came up with all zeros or something uh, on the grids or something out of the other. Uh, they couldn't get anything. Um, you know, and, and, and so everything we asked for, um, they wouldn't go to his apartment uh, to, um, you know, do a welfare check. I, I, I called Tempe because my son was a resident of Tempe. Uh, they told me how to rely on, on Buckeye because we're missing Buckeye. But I finally convinced Tempe to at least do a drive-by. They drive by, drove by his apartment, look at the doors to see if the windows are looking broken, and thing like that, and that was it. Um, so it, it was a lot of things at the beginning that um, we couldn't get uh, the buck out of the move. So I, when I read things in the report, and I can be honest with you, it's, it's like word games. And I, I tell people all the time, and I keep using the same analogy, and I get tired of it, is, um, you know, if a person tell me to go look in a cabinet and, and there's a jar and say, get this jar of jelly, out the cabinet and it's a jar uh, cabinet full of other things and i just open the cabinet door and i look and look and look with my head around i can either write down yes I, I i've looked but that person go behind me and actually put their hands in it and go look with their hands like i do on my searches every week um and find things then i can say i not only look i actually looked you know so i actually physically did something but i can easily write down a paper that i did this on this day but not really look and that's kind of uh, treatment from day one that my son's case has been getting. And uh, when I read things in those reports like that from a timeline they put in, I know it's it's, it's, um, it's word games and I, and it, it sickens me. Wow. Well, I'm sorry to hear this. I mean, this is, you know, I'm, I'm blown away, but um, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. So this was the 25th, what you talked about with the firebird. Uh, then they do another ground search near the job site. On July 6th, uh, they search his apartment because you gave him consent, uh, right? I mean, it, it sounds like they didn't get a warrant or uh, do we know that? I mean, from what you're saying. Well, um, he and I, uh, detective at the time, Biff, and we called the, uh, he tried to get me to do it. I went to the, the landlords. Uh, landlords had some reason illegally. The attorneys didn't want me uh, or family to go into Daniel's apartment. Um, you know, legally, because he's his name is on the lease, our name is not. Um, and so we tried it with the Buckeye Police Department because he asked us to go in. Um, and you know, and this is this is some things that I try not to put out in the public, but it's the truth. Um, you know, we couldn't get access to his apartment, so we had uh, Detective Hanahan, uh, Sergeant Hanahan at the time, Hanneman, um, told me and my daughter to break in his apartment. Told us, hey, just don't get caught, break in his apartment get access to the apartment so we can get in there because they can't get, um, and I have that recorded, so, but we can't get in there, uh, uh, you know, saying without a warrant. 
Uh, so what ended up happening, um, you know, we, we got on the phone with the landlords, um, kind of begged them to um, uh, let us in, in a sense. But he said by him being law enforcement, they may be a little nicer, which they ended up doing. They did a, let them do a walk in, but they had to walk with him to make sure he didn't touch anything. So the landlords were there. They wouldn't let me in the apartment as a family, but he was able to walk in there, look around, and then walk back out. So um, that's the way he, he entered that apartment. Roger that. And so July 9th, uh, they put up the Civil Air Patrol, does, a, you know, some flybys. Uh, and I, I've got I've got to hand it to you, man. You know, uh, David, when I went over to your website and guys uh, and mods, can we throw that website up? And I know there's a petition uh, to get some movement for Daniel's case. Uh, everybody go over there, sign that petition. Uh, we've got almost 1300 people in here right now share this video with everybody uh, on social media, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all the other YouTube creators. Uh, if you're out there in true crime, uh, this family is deserving of, you know, a good look uh, and uh, get the messaging out uh, about, you know, their son, Daniel. We need to get the word out and we need to keep the pressure on uh, to keep his name out in the public spotlight. Uh, no matter how old he is, this is wrong. Uh, from what we're, we're what I'm listening here, uh, you've hired a bunch of people to help you, and we're going to get into those to that conversation uh, here in a couple of minutes. Uh, I know CNN picked it up a while back, but you've lost traction there, uh, and we need to get you know national news back on this this young man's uh, case here. So the the worst of the worst now comes around. Uh, and I know this feeling as a father, uh, it's a gut punch. Uh, July 19th, 2021, uh, Daniel's Jeep is found in a ravine less than three miles, three miles from the job site, three miles from the job site. Okay. And Net, you know, tell me about that. Tell me about that. What was that like? Well, um, I got the news on uh, the <clears throat> on July 20th. Um, I got a call from Detective Biffin uh, roughly around nine that morning. And uh, um, yeah, he told me that he, they, he they, the vehicle was found. They found the vehicle, Dane's vehicle. Um, of course, um, you know, yeah, you hear that, the first thing you're thinking is something, um, you know, you know uh, about my son, because they, he mentioned the vehicle first. And I, you know, like, okay, well, about my son, he said, well, uh, we didn't find Daniel. Uh, he went down the line to tell me that um, about, um, you know, uh, they did the search. They did some, uh, I think he said, 12 to 20 hour search. Um, they used um, cadaver dolls. They used uh, tracking dolls. Um, there was no, no uh, uh, footprints or something out of other. And I, I didn't understand why he was saying footprints at the time, but he was uh, saying there was no footprints um, to follow. Um, um, you know, just different things about um, that vehicle uh, being found. So, but he said he wanted me to come in and um, he gave me a uh, briefing on what they found and um, and about the vehicle. And, you know, of course, I my first question after that was, why didn't you guys call me yesterday when um, you found the vehicle? And he told me because he didn't want to disturb my sleep. And, you know, of course, that got me upset because um, I've been out there in that desert searching for my son for, um, at that time, uh, probably like a little two or three weeks um, searching. And um, um, you didn't think I'm sleepy. It, you know, but anyway, this uh, made it to the um, police compound. And um, that's when he showed me the picture uh, similar to what you have there. Uh, he had one picture and uh, two maps. Uh, he went through the map first and kind of showed me a location uh, where the vehicles found out there in the desert off that uh, Sun Valley Parkway. And... Um, and that, um, um, you know, uh, my son, the clothing, he pointed that out. The clothing was on the ground. He asked me, hey, your son, do his son wear boxes of briefs? And I told him I wouldn't know that. I don't know what kind of, you know, undergarment my son would wear. But he said, well, it was on the ground. Everything's there. His socks, uh, his sock, his, um, his um, uh, boots, everything was there. Uh, he showed, <clears throat> showed me the vehicle. I apologize. Uh, get a little stress. My voice stopped going away. But, um, you know, it's, it showed me the uh, uh, vehicle and started describing, um, you know, what he thought, 
<clears throat> may have happened um, at that scene. And, uh, you know, one of the things was the, um, he didn't see no blood in the vehicle. That's one thing he told me first. Um, and indicated my son probably wasn't injured uh, and that he had um, most likely had a severe head injury, uh, but he did have his seatbelt on and he, he crawled out through the sunroof. Um, and it, that's what probably made him shred his clothes because when you have a head injury, um, you shred your clothes, you get, you think you're hot. And um, he told me he went on a tree somewhere, probably cool off. So those are the kind of things I was told at, uh, initially. And then he finally um, took me uh, to the location at the police compound where the vehicle was stored. Did, was, was, there, was there evidence of uh, an injury that, that in the car? Um, not that he told me. He told me just that um, he didn't think he had any injuries at all uh, because he didn't see any blood. Um, but at the same time, he was saying he, he uh, most likely had a severe head injury that made him shred his clothes. So that's the two things that um, I was told. Interesting. Um, very interesting. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more because I see that all of the airbags have deployed here. Uh, and um, th this is this is really um, crazy. OK, so on the 21st, invest uh, well, you hired a reconstructionist as well, right? OK, I apologize. I didn't hear the question. No worries, no worries. Did did you hired a recon an accident reconstructionist? Correct. Uh yes, I did. That was after um, you know uh, hearing everything that the Buckeye Police Department told me that it makes sense. Um, they did the Buckeye Police Department did <clears throat> download the uh, data from the black box. Um, that was part of the, what they did uh, once they got that vehicle to um, their uh, police compound. Um, that was done. Um, I guess um, at the scene or when they got it there, but I know the next day on the 19th, I mean, on the 20th, when I got there to return, they turned the vehicle over to me. They told me I had to get out of their compound or if they're gonna have a toll and I have to pay storage. So I I begged them for a few days. And like I said, and with those few days, that's when I decided to get my own investigator. Once I had that meeting with um, uh, Chief Hall, Hall and his staff, and I wasn't satisfied for there not being any, any forensics work done on the scene and um you know um and and, and, the, and the thing had to tell me um uh, about son so that's when my accident reconstructionist came in uh, he went to buckeye they gave him the data that they retreat pulled from the black box they just didn't know how to read it because everything that he came uh, he got from um that black box information came from buckeye's draw of that black box so um that's where the information came from they just didn't know how Read what they had, and so he he was able to let them know about the mission cycles and things like that uh, from that pool. Okay, and then uh, so once the how did they extract data from his uh, uh, cell phone? And do you know what extraction software they utilized? Did it uh, sound uh, okay? Uh, do you have access to those records? Uh, to the phone records? Yeah. Yes, I do. Okay. Okay. Um, we'll talk about that uh, next. So this is another angle of the Jeep down in that or ravine there. Okay. Yes. And that, um, you know, that ravine is de deceiving. The pictures are deceiving. It's very uh, steep. And uh, the pictures will make it look um, a lot flatter than it is. So it, it's, it's a little deeper than that. Yeah. If you're just joining with us, um, this is... <clears throat> Mr. Robinson, he is the father of Daniel Robinson, who has been missing uh, and was his vehicle was discovered, uh, uh, rolled over uh, in a ravine in the Buckeye, Arizona area. Uh, he's been searching for his son almost six months uh, relentlessly, and he needs our help. Uh, he has been out in that area. Uh, leaving the state of South Carolina regularly uh, to go search every opportunity he can. He has a, a team uh, assisting him. Uh, there is a GoFundMe uh, that is set up. I will get to that here uh, later on. Do not send any money to, obviously, to us at TIR. Go over 
to pleasehelpfinddaniel.com. You can donate over there. If everybody here went and put another two bucks uh, into that account and it grows, uh, we will be doing God's work. Uh, so if you want to donate, uh, go over there. They can use the resources. Uh, they have been hiring professionals, uh, professional investigators, uh, uh, professional accident reconstruction reconstructionist. Uh, who else have you guys been utilizing? I know you you've got a lot of contacts being a being an army uh, veteran, and thank you you know for your service and God bless you for that. And this is the least we can do uh, to help you and your family uh, hopefully get some. Um, some answers for for you and uh on your son here what, what other resources have you been utilizing well you know we have to um definitely get equipment and things like that out there in the desert um you know a lot of people uh you know that comes out to the searches they know that that terrain is uh really large uh we need things to uh, uh you know to be able to uh, go out there and search um you know we have that line search but we have the volunteers but we definitely have to use equipment and, and, you know, so right now I'm definitely need more people uh, with the resources and things like that from uh, uh, people who are very qualified that know more about the desert and things like that. But we try to utilize and be, um, use what we can the best we can. Use what we have the best we can. Okay. Um, so the 22nd investigators processed the Jeep for evidence. Uh, did they mention they got anything? Sir, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. That's all right. On the 27th uh, or the 22nd, uh, they processed the Jeep for evidence. Did they relate if they got anything? Well, um, that was on, you said the July 28th. Yeah, that's when I had. No, 22nd, 22nd. Uh, oh, 22nd, okay. Yep. Yeah, I know it was a few days after, um, um, you know, my son's um, vehicle was recovered like i said the next day on the 20th um they uh they gave the vehicle to me you know they turned it over to me i i couldn't find a place to like for actually three days but in that three days i was able to uh secure a meeting with the uh buckeye police chief uh chief hall uh his his uh, assistant chief sanders and and, and and the whole staff the um uh detectives and um sergeants and, uh, you know, in that meeting, that's when I discovered they didn't do any forensics work um, on that because they only gave me one picture. And, you know, I thought I would see markers there. Um, at that time, I was able to uh, talk to the rancher who uh, spoke with me and my investigator because he was really concerned about what he saw out there in the searches. He didn't, he said, told us things like they said they had cadaver dogs with an S and only had one dog and it was a tracker dog because uh, the rest of the dogs was in some kind of class or something or other. Um, that dog came out at 10 o'clock at night. Um, they took it out for almost an hour and then brought it back because um, they said the mountain lion was, was uh, stalking the dog. Um, the razor, they didn't have any helicopters there. Even they put in a report that they did. Um, they used um, uh, drones. And he said they did have a drone. Um, I believe that because once I got the pictures, that's what I see, a drone operator and drone footage. They don't have helicopter footage. Um, even though Buckeye at the time told me that uh, they had the helicopter was flying so low that if you hold your hands up in the air like this, you can touch the bottom. You know, I don't know if he was messing with me, but that's exactly how he told me. And, and you know, so just listen to the account of the guy who was out there on his lands, um, out there the whole time. He said he even had to change their razor tire, um, because they only had one razor out there, and there was only four um police officers out there, um, vehicles. And I, I believe that because we look at the footage. That's all you count is four vehicles, you know. So everything he said was was true, and it, and it bothered me. Um, so, like I said, um, sitting in that meeting, knowing these things, and um, hearing it firsthand from the rancher who was actually there, who found the vehicle um, when they took like four hours to even come out there to, uh, when he was out there um, waiting on them, um, you know, um, that bothered me. So, like I said, I asked for all the different work, and that's when um, they decided to say, "Okay, well, Mr. Riley, we'll do some fingerprinting." And and but I still don't know what those results is to the day when I asked. So I don't know anything about what they found off those fingerprints um, or anything like that. But they did do it um, afterwards, after the fact. So the 28th, they obtain his bank accounts with your assistance uh, and start investigating his financial tra uh, transactions. Is there any activity 
uh, after the day he was reported missing? Well, I, I never gave him anything, so I don't know what they mean. I gave him records. I never gave him paper or anything. Um, they called me and asked me, do I see any movements? Um, matter of fact, I had um, Detective Biffin call me a few weeks ago now and ask me, do I see any movement in this account? Of course, we don't. Um, there's his, his paycheck money still there. Um, you know, his bank, you, you can imagine his account, um, this, this, when he was collecting his, his checks, it was, it was there, it's, um, you know, nothing moving. The only thing that comes out of his, his account is recurrent, uh, bills like his car wash. He, he keeps his Jeep clean. And, and, um, so he had some type of membership at a, a car wash, little small things like that would come out, little fees and stuff like that. Interesting. Um, so the 29th volunteer search search crews recover. Yeah. So this area, uh, how many times or how many weeks have you been now searching uh, the general geographic region of where your son's vehicle was discovered? Uh, this um, search coming up on the 8th would be 20 weeks. 20 weeks. And about how many people have volunteered their time to assist you to date for approximately? Oh man, that's a lot. Um, we we started off with 25. At one point, we had 200 um, a week, and then now we're down to probably roughly 70 or 80 uh, at some points, um, and even sometimes down to um, it could be uh, 20 or 30. So um, it fluctuates. It fluctuates a lot, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of people. You add them all up um, every week. Uh, I say we we in the thousands now, in my estimate. Okay, and and in that time, you've also discovered other human re remains, correct? And that's true. Um, we have, um, you know, from our account, uh, we can't say each bone uh, don't belong to the other, but we did um, find, we know we found animal remains too. Don't get me wrong, uh, but we do have a homicide a, um, homicide detective uh, retired that's out there. So we have some volunteers who retired uh, pathologists. So we all know uh, when we see human and animal bones, of course, uh, we found the human skull, skull out there. Um, that was very hard because we could tell that person was, um, you know, some situations with that. Um, and we, everything we, we, the way my websites are set up, we have my website set up where um, anything that's found by the, by the volunteers, we tell them that don't touch it, um, you know, just take a picture of it and upload it to the website. And from the website, we have um, a copy that goes straight to Buckeye Police Department. Uh, copy go to my investigator and one to myself. So um, that's the setup that I have for um, the website, please help find .com. When you upload anything, it goes up to um, those three um, through three areas. So um, yeah, we found a lot of remains out there. Um, and like I said, um, 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 of course, um, after three months, um, uh, it was a statement come out from Buckeye Police Department that um, except for the skull, can't deny skull. Um, that they all was animal bones. Um, of course, the latest um, bones that we found was uh, three weeks ago. Um, it was a freshly a fresh uh, set of bones um, uh, remains. Um, still had certain, not to be so graphic, but the um, you know the cartilage and you know certain little things that would indicate it's not very old. Um, of course, we sent that up to the Buckeye Police Department, like we always do. Uh, they came back and said they're all animal bones. Um, you know, of course, that made me it. I demanded um, um, a real pathologist look at it. They sent it to the medical examiner's office. We waited for three hours and they came back all human bones. And it's the first time I've ever seen Buckeye come out there and make it a crime scene. They made it a crime scene. Um, they came out and collected those um, items. Um, I asked them that I need to make sure it was my son because I was scrubbing that ground, trying to make sure I get every piece if it's my son. And and uh, uh, they told me they would. Um, before I could make the phoenix, they called me back and said, Mr. Robinson is not your son. Um, but um, at the same time, uh, the reporters, when they talk to reporters, say they don't know who it belongs to and they need to do DNA testing. They don't have any DNA samples from me, my family, or anybody. So, you know, things like that. So we do find human remains out there, um, a whole lot of them, um, and we know the difference. Um, um, and, yeah. and, yes. this, this, just, this, is just, this just blows my mind listening to you say this, that they, somebody identified it first as animal bones, and then it ends up becoming human bones. And I feel bad if uh, we would have, if I would, you know, and that's what made me a theater because um, what happened was uh, we know animal, it was never being called animal bones when we turned them over uh, until we start. I started making national news and then they came out and said it was all animal bones except for the skull. 
And so that made me angry. And I think about that. I say, you know, if I would have left them bones on that ground, uh, tell my team, let's go and move on, uh, somebody's family member would still been laying down, laying there on that ground. And, yeah. and that upsets me um, as a father who's out here looking for my son and, you know, and, and, and all the other families that calls me all the time um, about their loved ones. They don't even get a chance to maybe give a little, uh, a little spot of having some kind of attention like my son is getting now. And I, I don't have enough attention uh, for my son's case and they don't have none at all. And then their loved one could be that person on the ground. So yes, of course that upset, upset me. And um, you know, I'm, I'm glad I, I stood my ground. I'm glad that um, you know that medical examiner came back and 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 um, you know uh, gave us the, the truth about those bones, those remains. Wow, yeah, it, wow. And we're going to get into some questions over here in a little bit, uh, but that that in of itself just blows my mind. And in fact, you've probably I and correct me if I'm wrong. When we talked uh, earlier. Um, you think maybe there could be as many as uh, how many people uh, discovered out there and how much peace have you, you know, God bless you. I mean, how, here you are searching for peace in your own life and you're bringing peace to other people's lives, right? Uh, other families, like you mentioned. And, and guys and gals, let's not forget that, right? I mean, we just heard it uh, right from, you know, Daniel's father. Uh, just think, if he, just think if, if they would have just walked past that and or maintain that it was an animal uh he's a hundred thousand percent a million percent correct that there would be another family right now still uh looking and searching for their loved one uh and yet this man you know out of the the goodness of his heart you know uh, looking for his own son discovers somebody else's uh demise and um you know now he's brought some peace to them so Man, I, I, I got to tell you, David, your 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 story here is absolutely heart wrenching. Well, you know, and, I don't yeah. want to cut you off, sir, but I can't um, oh, take good. credit for, um, you know, it, I have volunteers. I have people who um, who um, dedicate their time and I tell them this every 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 um, search. They know we are family out there and um, these people will come out. Some of them been on every search. Um, they come out, uh, spend their gas money. They spend their times. Um, I have some, um, um, I, call, I like to call myself a grizzly. We have some from, um, I don't know if you've ever, ever heard of um, grizzly true crimes. <clears throat> um, and, you know, uh, you know, people from, um, that's from social media and from, um, from, the, from the, um, the, the public in general, from all over Arizona and some in California um, would come out to, um, to the searches. And without those people being dedicated like that, I wouldn't be able to be out there looking for my son. So those those people um, help find those human remains um, out there and um, and bringing people, family members home too. You know, we're not we're not um, officers. We're um, they're not sisters, brothers um, come to help me. You know, um, search for my son. And we just so happened to uh, bring closures like that, that skull, like the human skull. Um, had a family in Florida, um, the, a, a, a lady in Florida, her brother went missing that area. Um, I was able to um, bring closure to her family uh, with that skull um, because they finally did some type of free, free, uh, uh, drawing or something, for instance, drawing. Um, I was able to give her that information and she feel like it's her brother. So they in the, in the process of cl uh, claiming their loved ones. So, you know, those are good things. And it always makes me feel great, uh, you know, out there looking for my son, but at the same time, bringing some closure to other families. So I'm grateful for that. And, and that's on the 29th that the, the cops put it on their timeline. Uh, and you guys are, are the ones out there, you know, boots on the ground, kicking the dust, and you bring closure to that family. Well, you know, good for you. Uh, the 19th, uh, uh, you interview our Daniel's uh, co-workers are interviewed. Uh, and then, of course, we get into uh, additional information on the 28th. The Santan Recon uh, Reconstruction crash site for independent crash report uh, comes back. Is that your guy? No, that's, uh, you know, that, that upsets me because I've been begging um for resources as in um you know i need real um 
law enforcement presence out there in my searches. Um, and, you know, at the time I was, um, you know, really like you was asking about it and things like that. My, my team, there's a lot of resources go out, money goes out really quick. And, um, you know, and we have to, um, you know, try to ask law enforcement to, to kind of aid us some, just aid us or whatever, but they, they decided to, uh, take some of their resources instead of helping us, um, to, uh, rebut, um, my investigator, um, you know, uh, my investigator came along and read their read their um, their data that they pulled from the black box, and also uh, took that that you connect uh, the um, infotainment system and sent out the California analysis. Get came back with a 900 page report, and gave Buckeye everything. Gave him the report, um, the timeline that the vehicle was first crashed. You know, just everything. And that's the last time I was able to speak to um, the Buckeye. They won't call me. They, they won't talk to me when I call and things like that. Um, they shut down on us. And then the next time I hear from them, I hear this report coming out from um, some accident reconstructionists. I already have an accident reconstructionist who um, check these things out, uh, but they decided to get their own uh, to to keep that theory that my son somehow, what well, they told me at the beginning, like I told you, they said my son had some type of head injury. He didn't get hurt. He had a head injury. He crawled out that window, shred his clothes and disappeared in, in the desert naked. And, and the last thing he told me, um, uh, Detective Biffin, that my son may want to get away from his family and join a monastery and become a monk. So, you know, things like that. When you tell me that, you know, saying, and you still will go out there and do everything you can to keep that storyline going and get a your own accident reconstruction is to go to a dealership, to a co uh, workers at a dealership to say that his anatomy is not unusual, uh, which it should be a recall if uh, Jeep. You know, if the if the data don't matches the the dash, you know, saying from the computer, that's a recall, and I, I'm sure Jeep don't appreciate that that kind of uh, statement from the Buckeye Police Department. But um, that's what they are saying uh, from a coworkers workers at a Jeep dealership um, to back their um, analysis up with a reconstructionist. And and, and I remind you, the reconstructionist never looked at the vehicle that they have. He never um, he just going by relying on pictures. Uh, third party stuff you know i have the vehicle i have the vehicle stored right now in a secure location and uh and i had it from um the time they, they turned over they, they, all the evidence they turned over to me all my son's belongings and evidence bags i mean to everything so this guy he never you know um um touched anything never seen my son's vehicle uh personally so um they didn't even ask to see my son's vehicle but he was able to put his report was able to make it into the police report but my investigative report did not. So you got to start asking that kind of questions why certain things make in a report and what, what doesn't. Uh, Brand, Brandon, uh, the, the rancher, his account didn't even make it into the report, yet he found the vehicle. You know, saying so his statement didn't make it into the report. So, um, you know, I, I ask questions about things like that, but they write what they want to write in their report. And I think because um, sometimes people look at law enforcement as law enforcement, they just take their word for it without asking questions. But I ask questions. Yeah, no, and we're going to ask questions too. Um, and we're going to have you back as often as you want. And I hope every YouTube creator out there uh, has uh, Mr. Robinson on because we need to we need to just get the word out uh, on on your son. Uh, this is just listening to your story um, is, is absolutely uh, I, I'm just I, I'm going to be reserved because everybody knows how I am and but at the same time uh you know i'm reading the the timeline here the 28th they process uh or for an independent crash report the the 14th they revisit the crash site uh you know to kind of tie some things together but at the same time you have related to them already that you have expended resources uh in hiring your own accident reconstructionist your own pi and you're and a retired homicide guy, and they start kicking the dust. And what we used to call DLR does not look right, uh, immediately starts coming to the surface here. Uh, and, you know, just looking at this from a distance, you know, and, you know, this, this is not my first rodeo. And, and I'm thinking, you know, holy cow, what potentially could be going on here? You've got a rancher that finds the car. Uh, this right now uh, needs some serious scrutiny. 
uh, and, and which was really interesting in one of the last concepts, uh, and we'll get to it here in a couple of minutes, is they debriefed the FBI. But on the 18th, uh, you know, they find that the renegade was involved in a rollover crash. It was the only crash recorded on the vehicle's internal systems. The speed increased the night before impact, which could indicate an attempt to drive up the other side of the ravine. More than 40 ignition cycles were recorded. This could be due to the driver attempting to restart the vehicle. Now, here's the kicker here, okay? keeping an open mind. Okay? I don't know if Daniel's driving that Jeep. There you go. I, I, you, know, no, no, me. you know what I mean? We, we can say what the Jeep did, okay? but we can't say who did it. Okay? This is the question why. This is why we ask, okay, uh, these types of things, right? More than 40 ignition cycles uh, in the electronic system. It's unclear how many cycles occurred uh, during the tow recovery and when it, uh, investigators downloaded the data. But there was an 11 mile discrepancy between the crash data and the displayed odometer reading, which is not considered unusual. Similar discrepancies have been noted by Jeep dealerships, service departments, and other crash reconstructionalists. And this is where you were talking about, well, maybe somebody needs to, you know, take a hard look at that, right? Um, but this is the one that really uh, caught my attention outside of some of the other, you know, craziness that we're hearing here tonight. Human remains found indicate a different missing person. This is what you had already discussed. But on the 23rd, the FBI was briefed. Do you have any idea why they briefed the FBI almost five months later after your son's disappearance or because actually like how letter. many months, four months, three months, four months. Because I sent the letter. Um, I, 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 I prayed about it. God gave me the right words to say. I wrote a long letter to um, Chief Hall. I CC um, the city manager, the mayor, and a couple of other officials in that letter <clears throat> so that he can't never say he gotten, hadn't gotten it. I, um, in that letter, um, I wrote, um, I just outlined the fact that, to make it make it short, um, that my son went missing in, in a crime scene. Here I am, a, a citizen, a regular guy with uh, volunteers um, going out in the desert finding human remains out there. Uh, one is a skull that appeared the person was executed, the teeth was broken out. And, and, and this is crime scene, we constantly finding human remains near where my son's vehicle was recovered. Not only, the skull was only a few hundred feet from the vehicle. And, 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 and here it is, my son, um, Chief Hall, accidentally, um, he didn't ever admit it before, uh, but he went on CNN and, and said, it was, um, my son would miss on the suspicious circumstances. We were trying to get him to say that for a while. So I put that in that letter also. I say, even you agree, my son went missing in a suspicious circumstance in a crime scene near BLM land, uh, Bureau of Land Management, federal land, near federal land. And, and um, somehow, um, you know, I make a long story, the, the request was to have the FBI come in um, because in that letter also said, if you guys are unwilling to do it or they just don't have the resources, then we need the FBI to take charge because they do have the resources. I need to find out what to my son. Uh, so Chief Hall waited about three days later and, and um, hit me back up with a letter saying that uh, after he accused me of holding back evidence and things like that. Um, but, you know, that's some things I just, I just um, you know, address later. But the last paragraph, he said he personally uh, requested a case review with the FBI. I had made a, uh, I made a press conference, family press conference, so I can announce that. I was very happy that I finally, can, after uh, all these months, been fighting for that to get the FBI to come in. So I waited um, about a week uh, immediately uh, when he said that I, my attorney, she um, wrote, a, uh, we wrote a letter uh, requesting that I be part of that case briefing. Um, I didn't get any response back from that. So I thought maybe he just needed a little more time. Uh, when I did my search that weekend, uh, that Monday came, I get a call from um, Detective Biffin. Uh, who told me that the FBI, he wasn't personally there, 
but uh, the FBI uh, would not be coming to my son's case because the FBI said, uh, I as a father is doing such a great job myself, they don't need to be there. So that upsets me as a father because I'm not stupid. I don't, that doesn't sound like something the FBI agent would say. Um, I immediately asked um, Detective Biffin of the agent's number, um, badge number or whoever he is. And they, to this day, not speaking to me. So I'm, um, I'm trying to find those answers. So, don't, so that's where it came from when they, when they put that there. Um, it's from my, my, my letter to Chief Hawk. So what do they think happened? Uh, I mean, they, um, so far they've told you he's gone off to become a monk. He took all his clothes off. Uh, you know, he rolled his Jeep. Um, meanwhile, the, the victimology on this, if we use what's, you know, the victim continuum, right? He's a low risk victim. It, you know, the victimology on this is this young man is on a course of life success. There is nothing indicating anything is going on in his life that would indicate. And plus, he's worked in that desert for how long? My son has been working for that company almost three years. Uh, he's been going to different well sites. Um, you know, he's not a stranger to um, being out in the desert, but that was his first time in that desert. Yes. Okay. So, you know, th just the monk story in of itself, you, you've got to go, wait a minute you know, are you serious? Okay. And you know, that in of itself, it, that, you know, just hold all the horses, uh, just in that one statement alone. Okay. Um, and if, if let's say, let's say, did he, could he have run across somebody, right? But before we get to that, and, and I don't want to speculate, I want to only deal with facts here. This is what we do on this channel, yep. just facts. Okay. And I know everything you're saying, uh, is right on target. So the next goal here uh, for you guys is uh, our next goal is to continue pu uh, pushing forward to find out what happened to Daniel, even if it means no help from law enforcement. Then you say the way that Daniel's case has been handled from day one by law enforcement can uh, easily cause him to become one of the Many and my, I don't have my glasses on, but you know, forgive me, you know. But I'm, I'm um, reading every word that you know without um, have, ever having answers. Okay, perfect. And read the th read the third arrow over there if you wouldn't mind. I, <laughs> I want the world to hear it. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm like that too with my eyes. Um, okay, we will continue <laughs> to uh, we will continue to seek support from anyone uh, who wants to help. Um, we won't uh, settle for the minimal amount of searches. Um, and support sworn law enforcement officers are and detectives are given Daniel's case. Yep. And and so how can we help find Daniel? You've established a website created by your family. There is no other website that's associated with you and your family other than that one. So guys and gals, put the word out there. There's nothing other than what Mr. Robinson has put together. So frauds, you know, you know, fake money, all that, you know, donate over here. No, none of that. You go directly to help find Daniel. Okay. Robinson.com. That's where you donate. That's where you sign up to help. You know, all this other stuff, if YouTube gets involved and there's some characters on YouTube, we all know that in social media, but the honest, the honest ones will, are going to tell you, go right where his family has established this website for information. This website is where you will get your up-to-date info and that can be shared with the public. Also, Mr. Robinson expresses the fact that you know them. Uh, what, what exactly does that mean? Uh, I will express the fact that as I know them, oh, the, the circumstances, okay. You'll express it, okay. Please join the uh, blog community chat to discuss with the family directly. Thank you for your support, love and prayers. God bless David Robinson II. And this is this gentleman right down below me, uh, Daniel's father. Wow. I love this picture. And I put it, you know, connecting with you and now all the resources in the world. Okay. And we have a lot of really smart people. Here is the website. Please help find Daniel.com. 
I'm going to put a ticker up here as we continue to talk about this young man and how we can help assist this wonderful family. There it is. There's a phone number for a tip line. You can call 24-7, 365. You can text. You can be anonymous. Any information will help, even if it's a small piece. Uh, remember, it takes a small rudder to turn a ship, an aircraft carrier. It's a very small rudder that turns an aircraft carrier. Let's become that rudder for this wonderful family. And I'm leaving become a monk up because that is the most outrageous statement uh, I've heard in a very long time. Uh, I mean, I'm like, you know, you have got to be kidding me. Um, uh, and for the FBI, you know, not to jump in just yet. And by the way, we're going to tell some folks, you know, some of the things that we're working on and cooking uh, behind the scene. So let's join the, the, the Robinson family here and let's see uh, how we can help. And, you know, I got to be honest with you. Your son's much better looking than you, buddy. That's right. <laughs> he yeah. looks like his mother. You know, <laughs> you know, you know, he hopefully and hopefully, man, what a, what a handsome young man. What a handsome young man. Let's show let's show David some love in the chat over here, shall we? Uh, let's put some, uh, let's find the, let's do orange, orange love. Okay. What was his favorite color? David. Uh, you kind of breaking up on me. That's all right. What's, what, what's uh, Daniel's favorite color? You know, I, I've been asked that question three times now, and I, I still have neglected to ask his sister. Uh, and, you know, um, one person is saying it is true. Um, it's kind of one of those conversation that'll come up between the father and the son. Hey, so what color do you like? You know, uh, I should ask his mother that question, you know, <laughs> but um, I really don't know. Um, uh, Daniel, he never did describe the color thing with me. <laughs> okay, well, I'll we're going to give him... His car is blue. I, I don't know. <laughs> we're going to give him orange on, you uh, on YouTube. Uh, so whenever you see these hearts, people are thinking about him and, uh, and people are going to keep them... Uh, in their hearts, okay? Uh, most definitely. What What's his favorite sports team, somebody's asking? Now, I can't tell you it's the Arizona Cardinals. He kind of he flipped on me. He was a, a, a Falcon fan along with me, uh, Atlanta Falcons. And uh, he, he since he moved to Arizona, he wanted to be all Arizona. That, that tell you he loved Arizona. <laughs> okay, so Daisy Day. Uh, Jennifer uh, Cavanaugh, she's a retired FBI agent. Uh, she's offering her help. So have her reach out on the on the website uh, to uh, David and uh, let's get them connected up and maybe we can get uh, News Nation on board here uh, as well to keep uh, this America's son in the news here. Let's blow this up. Uh, this family deserves um, this family deserves uh, what's going on, uh, you know, in terms of this type of motivation from social media, not the kind of. Uh, help they've been getting, not in totality. We need to light this up as a world. Uh, his name is Daniel Robinson. Daniel Robinson. And you can go help find Daniel.com. Uh, uh, and it's right down at the bottom. Please help find Daniel.com. Uh, you can go to that website, everybody. Please share it. Uh, please tell, uh, put it on your Facebook accounts. Put it uh, in your true crime, uh, you know, groups. Um, just blow it up. Let's just put it on Twitter. Put it on Instagram. Uh, just like we did with Maya Miliete in San Diego. Uh, we yep. are going to do this for your son. And we're going to blow Daniel up all around the world. Let's show, uh, David, how many countries are in the house. Can you see the... Uh, the comment section over there, David? Yes, I can. I want to say um, hello to the Grizzlies, um, uh, Gizla, who's uh, the Grizzly True Crimes. Um, I see a lot of the Grizzly. They come out to the searches, and um, and I'm really uh, proud of them. Um, they're here on your show also uh, in the comments, so I'm, I'm happy to see them here. 
that's awesome. And give a shout out to anybody else you want, my friend, if you see them in there. Feel free. That's, yeah, and I, I just want to say really quick is um, also um, you was asking what further efforts that um, I'm doing to find my son. And one of those bigger things is I started my city searches. Uh, my city searches is designed. I have these uh, um, uh, flyers. I wish I had one on me right now. I can uh, show you what they look like. I think I got one on the side of this computer. But um, um, the flyers, I had designed them very small. I wanted to make sure I cater to the homeless population. Um, I designed them to a certain size. Um, that way uh, it can fit in a person's pocket. It's easier to carry. Instead of having a big old piece of sheet of paper, if I can reach it over there, I'll get it for you. But um, also the flyer, uh, the city searches, like I said, is to reach every uh, city in Arizona. Uh, and thanks to the volunteers that come out uh, grabbing their flyers on um, on uh, Saturday after the after the desert search, uh, they meet me at a different location to grab those flyers and and take it home, take it to their cities and and uh, pass them out. So I'm grateful for those uh, volunteers for that. So I'm doing that, and also uh, my goal is to have a a mass uh, search on the 15th or or the week after that um, 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 this come year uh, January. Um, I'm, at, I'm inviting the Buckeye Police Department again. I'm sending them a second letter, um, inviting them back out uh, with a list of resources. And I need people and channels like yourself uh, to help me promote that. Um, I want to be able to uh, let them know, hey, this is the list I need. Because um, last time I invited them out, they didn't uh, provide those resources I asked for. So I'm going to give them a little time. If they don't have the resources, maybe they can come up with the money. And if they need to, need some money, then I help them uh, purchase some of those uh resources they need to come out to help me so i, I want to invite the uh, buckeye police department out i want to invite the uh the media out. i want to invite, invite all of your followers and everybody out um on those dates but i will have it on my website um i have that date by the end of this weekend to uh secure as that date that i will um have a search but here we go this is the uh flyers i don't know if you can see that but the flyers designed here uh, uh with daniel's uh picture logo but like on the back here it has the reward there uh, but it's, it's designed to, uh, like I said, it's small, very small size of your hands. It fits, you know, fits in your pocket, things here, like let, that. So let, let's put, that up. Put, the, put that up one more time. You're in solo here. Yes, we got. yes. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, oh. we can see it. Awesome. Everybody checking that out. This is great. And, and you're and, hoping that, go ahead. Yes. And on the other side is uh, the, the tip. Uh, hey, the but the number on the bottom is going to change. Of course, um, I've printed these out before I did the new tip line. So, and that um, tip still line below. Yes, that's both. The, you can that's use both. the right um, line, right? right? Yeah, the one below is the right line. Yes, uh, that's a new line. And uh, that one has uh, operators, uh, live operators, uh, 24 hours, seven days a week. Uh, like I said, you can, you can, if you don't want to talk to an operator, you can actually uh, type the word, um, text the word tip. To that number and then the, the form will come up you can stay anonymous or if you want to be known who you are you can also do that too so uh we're really grateful if you uh you do that me and my family uh, and i really uh, grateful for everybody on your channel oh absolutely and did you, and you set up a youtube channel did, did you set up a youtube channel i hope uh, i didn't hear you uh did, did were you did you set up a youtube channel Oh uh, yes, I did. Uh, please help find Daniel. Um, and uh, you know, I I've been uh, juggling, uh, trying to do searches, two searches, and um, um, some other little things. So sometimes um, my, I'm not really great on social media. Uh, I'm really good on Twitter. Um, I do have the um, the, the uh, YouTube. I have the Facebook, and I have Instagram. I even um, I laugh with, I laugh about this because my children. I laugh with them. They say, "Dad, you need to get a TikTok," and I'm like. I'm not. I'm not the kind of guy that's be dancing around on the TikTok. You know, that's not who I am. That's not my style. You know, but you know, um, but I did was able to put a couple of videos up there, and I'm going to start trying to uh, be better at, um, you know, uh, getting people more involved. Um, social media, because social media is very important. It's powerful. Yes, it is a powerful and and the I'll tell you, the 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 family that we have over here in the interview room, are are your family. Uh, trust yes. me, when they when they commit, my friend, uh, I mean, we, we're hoping to move some mountains, you know, as as uh, you know, you, you can't put limits on a limitless God. He knows yes. what he's doing and he knows how to move mountains. And 
you know, he's going to move some mountains here. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. I you have my commitment that I will 100% help you uh, wh- however I can. And I know that we mm-hmm. talked the other day uh, with the Cold Case Foundation, and we'll keep that you know conversation because we know there's some things that need to happen over there. But yes, uh, you know, I'm praying that we can at least get you know maybe people like this who have a national voice like Brian. Uh, News Nation, uh, let them pick up maybe Court TV. Uh, I'm on as a guest, you know, for Court TV uh, as a, you know, talking head every once in a while. But, you know, uh, the next time I'm up there, I'm going to mention, hey, we we need to get on this Daniel Robinson case uh, because it, it is just not, it's it just doesn't look right. And this father and family need some help. Uh, and, yes. my, yeah, no problem. <laughs> you know, we're, you're a good man and you're a good family and your son's a good boy. And we need to make sure that we get the right thing done. Uh, that is for sure. I have so much respect for you. Uh, That's you're, so you're Thank really, uh, what needs to happen, uh, for other families. You're, you're a good example, like the Miliete family, you know, and, and I, we met a mom recently, her name is, uh, Frances Gaines. She searched for her son for over two years. Wow two years and she reached out i i met her we talked and i said look you need to focus on that car we were able to help her behind the scenes uh the cold case foundation uh a fisherman found the car less than a mile and a half from her house in a lake is that crazy and if so you know what it's the small things that potentially could be right there and, uh, you know, let's let's pray that, uh, you know, we're not searching for, you know, his his remains, but we're searching for him. So are you uh, uh, to take, are you taking some questions? Are you good with that? Uh, can you say one more time? I apologize. Are, are you OK with taking some questions? Yeah, I'm OK with taking questions. Yes, I am. OK, so I, I want to start with the first one. <laughs> OK, how are you doing? I'm, I'm I'm hanging in there. Um, you know, uh, I hear that a lot. Um, by the grace of God, you know, I am a believer. Um, you know, I know God is often and finish of my faith. And without faith, um, you know, without works, um, you know, faith is dead. So you got to put your works into your faith. And I believe that I would bring my son home. And the only way to do that is I have to put my foot on the ground. I like to say, because I'm military, I like to put my boot on the ground and go find my son you know he's i'm his father and you know my son relies on me he relies on me i love him i need him so what keeps me going is is that fact you know saying um my son need me he need me he, he know that i'm not gonna give up on him uh they don't give up on anything like i was saying i uh, wanted to say earlier daniel brings people together and somehow he just have that gift whether he's here or not he brings people together um, he has that strength, um, the kind of guy that he is, um, and I'm his father. So I'm, I'm definitely, that's my strength right there, and I'm, I'm doing okay. Okay. So here's the first question. What's the chances of him uh, running into a mountain lion? What do you, uh, you heard anybody mention even anything like that? Well, um, when I first started my searches, I did hear um, about mountain lions in, um, in Arizona. I didn't know mountain lions were in Arizona. Um, at the time when I was out there in the desert searching, the first part of my searches, um, the Buckeye Police Department did tell me it was a mountain lion in that area, very aggressive. Um, Game and Fish knew about it. Of course, at the time, I was already contacting Game and Fish about other things. And, um, yeah, the, you know, there were some questions about that mountain lion because he's uh, in that area a lot. Uh, matter of fact, I think it's uh, two, but he's tagged. Um, I was even told at the time not to go because uh, I was concerned that the mountain lion could have gotten my son. Um, but I was told not to go to his den. It was a mountain lion den. If somebody tell me as a father where not to go look for my son, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to go. So I went out there uh, with my team, and we cleared that area, um, you know, to make sure my son wasn't there. Yeah. Uh, um, awesome. Awesome. Boy, there's so, you got a lot of love coming in here, my friend. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. 
ask him uh, Daisy Day. I, I think he'll probably accept it if she's, you know, stepping forward. Uh, I mean, she's a retired FBI agent. She's smart. Uh, I would love to see her get involved. Uh, no doubt about it. Uh, everybody over in Europe sends their love to you. Uh, you got the UK there and Australia uh, uh, chiming in here. Uh, you've got uh, Lori says, thank you for your service. Oh, thank um, you. And let's see here. Dads never give up. Love this from Fair Zach. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you knew. And, and this is you knew from last, you know, we, we chatted it up and she goes, you know, just out of the blue, right? You, and yeah. she's like, you got to meet this man. I said, you're, you know what? The universe is on schedule. Uh, I met him the night before. I mean, what are the odds of that? Right. Yes. What are the odds of that? Man. Yeah. This is, you know, I love this statement here. This is more of a comment uh, from Polka Dots. Daniels is blessed to have a father like you. Well, yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. Uh, we could get 14,000 signatures if we straight went up to sign up. So that petition, uh, Stephanie, I know you've been putting that up there. Uh, can you throw that up again, the petition to get over there for, uh, for people to sign up? As, uh, I got the greatest mods. They, uh, we have on this family and this channel, uh, they are just amazing, amazing people. Uh, and you need to, we need to have... Um, a question, uh, EquiSearch. Uh, Tennessee Girl, do they have to be uh, requested by LE or will they go in independent? Uh, can you help maybe uh, us understand that? And let's see, your dogs with job. I love the, I love these, love these names. Chris, over the years, have you seen LE Eagles get in the way of working these types of mis? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, before your head gets through the door, you know, the, the family's on the other side of it. Uh, that's why you check it and you, and you need to check it quickly, uh, because that's how you get tunnel vision. Okay. Uh, use Twitter to trend, uh, find Daniel Robinson. Yeah. I don't have a Twitter account, but you guys, uh, can get on that. Okay. Uh, South Carolina's in the house candy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that's my home. <laughs> And let's see here. Uh, yes, Daisy, if he, if he uh, if she steps up, I'm sure he will accept the help. Uh, Scotland yeah. sends their love. See, now we're starting to get worldwide here. Now. Starting to get so worldwide. We if we can kick this into high gear, uh, and and these folks right here can do it. Can, they can do it. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, I, we already answered that question. Uh, we got this one. You're a wonderful dad. So much love. Uh, thank you, uh, Gracie. I got to go back and find out how to put that up. Uh, let's hear. Let's hear. Sending prayers from Canada. It's complicated. Well, Scotland. Thank you. Yeah. Scotland's in the house. What else we got going here? Guys, if you have any questions, oh, there it is. There it is. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Um, so what are the theories other than this is a great one from Gemma? So what are the theories of what happened so far that Ellie is telling you? It, it looks like, is this in a, a narcotic smuggling corridor? You know, I, I hear a lot of rumors <clears throat> about that. I did he hear even Chief Hall um, tell me that um, the cartels uh, would land their planes out there on Sun Valley Parkway at night. Um, you know, things like that to, uh, I guess, drop their loads or whatever they have. Um, so I did hear things like that um, from Chief Hall, but, um, you know, from the volunteers, you know, that would say um, the area is high with um, that kind of activity. Um, um, also, that's a corridor for uh, human trafficking, um, things like that. So I have never seen anything out there. Um, you know, I wouldn't know people out there target practicing. I see vehicles out there all the time, you know, 
um, in the middle of the desert, you know. So I, I had never seen any type of activities uh, personally, so I, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know it was out there. Okay. Now, were you in the Army or the Marine Corps? Army. I'm Army. Army. <laughs> Go Army. Okay. I, <laughs> I thought I'd throw that knuckleball at you. And, right. uh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, they need a family to request. So uh, EquiSearch, uh, we're going to have to get you in touch with those folks. Uh, and um, so Thailand, uh, One Love, can you reach out uh, to the website, uh, connect with um, David here and get him in contact with EquiSearch or shift this, uh, share this over to those guys um, and see how we can get him to get Ellie to request them. Uh, this is an organization that uses horses. Uh, they have a lot of skill set uh, in search and rescue. Uh, they were recently in South Carolina for Summer Wells. Uh, so hopefully we can get you connected with those guys. Uh, right. Much love from Australia. Come in here. Uh, from see. Australia. <laughs> yeah, let's see here. You're an incredible father. They're praying for your safety too, my friend. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. I need that. Uh, Kath from the Low Country sending you love. Oh, yes, yeah, that's right. South Carolina <laughs> in the house. And uh, here we are. Uh, we're here for you, David. Thank you. More hearts. God bless you. Australia, Ohio's in the house. What a thank brave you. and wonderful father. Bring Daniel home. Scotland again, Minnesota, Minnesota. Uh, right. Tennessee, let's see here, Summer, where is that, South oh, Carolina, Columbia, yeah, that's Columbia. Beth is praying, that, yeah, that's my <laughs> there you go, they're all here for you, my friend, they're Thank all you. here for you. Thank you, Beth. Well, I have, I have uh, an hour and 37 minutes of your time. And what I want to ask you uh, is one thing that I do uh, towards the end here. And I'm, uh, will you come back? Okay. And what, what yes, we're going to do. Yeah. Will you come back on? Okay. Yes, As, okay. Cause I want to, I want to keep everybody moving fluid uh, with your son's case. Okay. So, um, there's a couple of things here. This is a, you know, God bless you, David. Your son's extremely lucky to have you. Thank um, you. We'll all do what we can from Zach. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Zach. Um, the attorney, the East, uh, and Dora says the AG needs to investigate the PD. Uh, you know, that's what, well, let's, let's see where, what happens. Let's see where we're going to go here because CCF is going to weigh in uh, with some resources as well and we want to make sure that we you know they're that the right people are doing the right things that's the bottom line here um, that's right. and i pray as well stacy that uh our favorite youtube creators will pull out all stops to help find uh daniel and there are a lot uh there are a lot of creators that can really make a difference uh and all of you know who you are let's help this man help his family uh and uh you know, he's a veteran who has served this country. Uh, the reason we are here is because of men like that. And now his son is missing. We have to give back. Uh, and everybody I know on our channel here absolutely is of that frame of mind. We have many vets uh, in our uh, uh, chat over here. In fact, let's see how many vets we have. Uh, let's do a roll call. Come up on uh, your chat here. Uh, give uh, David some love. And then I have one thing that I ask. Towards the end of every one of our shows, uh, I, I go to Hawaii. Uh, and, <laughs> and if, uh, but before we do that, I let you have the last word on anything that you need help on uh, and anything at all. Um, you, this is your opportunity to say it. And, um, you know, we're going to be here for you, my friend. Army Strong, uh, right there, Terry. Cool. Uh, uh, 
I hope he's from military family say thank you. Uh, all military families coming in. We may even have a couple of Marines show up here. Uh, we'll see because I know we got a lot of Marines. <laughs> Army vet, uh, uh, Cheryl, Gold Star wife. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you for the service. Yes. Yeah. And, and that they keep coming. So you have the last word, my friend. Uh, and uh, it's all yours. And then when you're done, uh, we'll take. I'll take everybody to Hawaii. Does that sound like a plan? Sound like a plan. Roger that. You got it. Okay. First, I want to tell you, sir, uh, Chris. Thank you for uh, bringing me on. Uh, Use your platform uh, to bring awareness uh, for my son's uh, case. Um, it's, it's been, like I said, a long six months. Um, on the twenty third, will be six months that my son uh, tomorrow. As a matter of fact, uh, would be six months that my son went missing. Uh, very hard, very devastating for my family. Uh, for me being here on the ground uh, in Arizona, on the ground, um, you know, uh, every day is like day one. Um, it's short of answers, um, short of, um, you know, a, a closure for me and my family. Uh, we want, um, you know, I, I want to tell everybody, Daniel has a mother um, that don't often get, uh, she's a very uh, private person, uh, but uh, she's there, um, you know, uh, in the background. Um, her and her husband, she's um, um, back to South Carolina with her husband, um, um, sad and, and, and devastated um, about her son. Uh, she's relying on me to um, find Daniel. Um, he has siblings um, that love him, um, that's worried. Um, it, it, the same way, they're not allowed to go in my searches. Um, a lot of people don't see them out. Uh, it's because, you know, it's obvious. I've been to war, um, you know, I know how it is to have um, things you have to bring back with you uh, that you have to live with the rest of your life. And, you know, my son, um, hopefully God uh, bring him alive. That's my faith because I'm a man of faith. But if God see otherwise, my children don't need to see that. They don't need to have that type of uh, memory um, about my son. Um, they need to remember Daniel the way he is when they last saw him. And so, you know, he do have family. He have um, um, aunties, uncles. He have two grandmothers. A grandfather who's grieving and you know he has the whole family dynamic we're a very close-knit family despite of everything that's uh, out there you may hear um, that give you different theories uh, one theory I know for a fact is that my son loves his family he loved me and his mother he loves siblings then you have a career uh, he's a scientist he's brilliant um, he's uh, very sharp he's meticulous about everything he do he have a schedule uh, he sticks by his schedule so um, uh, Daniel uh, is thoughtful, very thoughtful guy. Um, if you've met him, you, you'll see that he, he, he's very lovable. Uh, everybody, you, you couldn't help but but to love Daniel uh, just to meet him. So I just want I want people to know the uh, family dynamics uh, and and the reasons why um, I, as a father, would be out here looking for my son, like any other father will look for their son. I, I don't think it's something special. It is something that fathers do, and you know. Uh, uh, I'm praying that God bless that none of you that hear this message tonight to ever have to go through what me and my family go through because I know what men would do if our children go missing, we would go looking. Um, you know, we protect our family, we protect our children, you know, saying so. Um, that's my job, and that's what I'm out here to do. Perfect. Hard working every day, I'm stressed out 24-7, babe, no, no timeouts Wish we could fly away, you and I Go to our favorite place, oh yeah, yeah Make special memories, together I'll be your company, now and forever Facing a wall
taking away, yeah, we're taking away.